Why you shouldn't launch a podcast, especially now in 2020. I know every big time influencer is telling you, you need to have a podcast, you need to have a show, but what are some of the things that you need to consider before even having a podcast? In this video, we're gonna dive right into it. Why you shouldn't have a podcast in 2020. Stay tuned. Jay Wong here. I appreciate you guys coming back to the channel. We're going to dive right into why you shouldn't launch a podcast in 2020, but it would be amazing if you're getting any value out of this channel, if you're loving the content that we are creating, that if you can go ahead and smash the like button, it helps me tremendously with the YouTube algorithm. It would be much appreciated. So why the heck am I telling you not to launch a podcast? Well, truth be told, in the last five to six years, I've spoken on some of the biggest podcasting stages. We have taught podcasting in our online accelerators and online challenges. I run an entire agency that works with thought leaders, established experts, as well as companies on launching top 100 shows. So why am I telling you that you shouldn't consider doing it? Well, earlier this week, because we're trying to be more consistent in creating content and serve more and help more people, my team put together kind of like a hit list, a hit list of ideas and topics that we can kind of dive into, that we can add some value and add our two cents to. And as I was doing some research, I was appalled, I was shocked at the amount of content that's in the interwebs and online or on YouTube or all, you can just do your own research. And this is what I found and your, your results might look maybe the same or similar, which is how easy is it to start a podcast? This came up quite a bit. Which microphone do you use, right? Because we all know the microphone definitely makes a difference, right? It does, but not in the same way that you guys think about. Um, media hosts, what about media hosts, right? Which media hosts do we use? Tech reviews, my goodness. There are so many tech reviews on so many different things. There's so many different companies coming out with the microphone that's over here, the recorder that's over here. Do I need all of this? Do I need to build a studio? How do I become a better interviewer? How do I become more confident? And boy, oh boy, no wonder when it comes to creating any type of content, people overthink it and people get inundated with all this type of content that's going on online and nobody, nobody really has created any content around how to think through this, right? So here's the thing, here's the question around all this. Are all these topics, is, is that a bad idea? Are they valid? Right? Should I consider some of these things? Well, it depends. And before I actually teach you a little bit of what we do with our own clients, in, their, in, in when we work with people, we have a certain framework that we take them through to ensure that they not just have a great podcast, but they're able to drive leads from the podcast. They're able to make money from the content that they create, right? We have an amazing belief and this is not my own belief, but it's actually one from Stephen Covey. Stephen Covey, super famous author, wrote an amazing book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. You might have read it, but one of them, right, is this idea right here, begin with the end in mind. Begin with the end in mind. What does that mean, right? Well, when I interviewed individuals like Bob Proctor, or we recently released this interview of Jack Canfield, right? Uh, all on the channel, by the way, so you guys could, we'll link to some of those interviews if that's of interest to you. But Bob Proctor famously says, right? If you could see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. Is this some type of like law of attraction type thing? No, it really means that if you have a predetermined goal, if you have a predetermined vision, you have a predetermined blueprint, you can figure out how to build it. Imagine for a second that we are building a house together, right? We're working together, we're gonna build your dream house, right? Wouldn't it make sense if we actually had the right blueprint in place before we started just hammering nails and figuring out which screw gun is better or which nails are better. Like, doesn't that make sense, right? So that's part of the reason I was shocked in terms that all this content is outside and everybody is answering the wrong question. So let me introduce to you what you should be thinking about, especially if you are a thought leader, especially if you are a content creator, an influencer, a business individual that wants to get leads from it, right? Let me break down what we call the podcast your brand triangle effect, okay? The podcast your brand triangle effect has three components through it. How many components? One, two, and three. That's right, super simple, okay? On one side, we have your podcast channel. 
okay? Podcast channel, repeat after me a little bit, right? And the other side, we have your email lists, okay? Email lists, subscriber lists, right? And on the third component is a private community, right? We'll just write private community right up here. So this could be Facebook, this could be LinkedIn, this could be even a paid membership, right? The idea of having a podcast is that in the podcast, you're not just creating content, but you are creating call to actions, okay? We did an amazing video on this like, like a couple years ago, uh, or maybe even a year ago, with around social call to actions and direct call to actions, right? You want to be able to make a call to action to where? The community, right? As well as the email list, okay? And when you're on the email list, what are you doing? You're making a call to action to the podcast, right? And you're making a call to action to the community, right? And when you're in the community, when you're engaging in your Facebook groups, when you're engaging in your LinkedIn groups, what are you doing? You're sharing back with them information that was on the podcast, and you're sharing with them that are on your email list. How do people get access to your email list, right? In between all this, you have your offers, okay? You have your services, right? And this is probably a different topic, the offers and services, completely different topic for probably the next video or, or another video. If that's of interest to you, let me know in the comments below. We can definitely address how you essentially make great offers and put together great service packages so that when you're creating content, you're always cycling people through these three main areas. So if you're listening to the podcast, I'm gonna push you somewhere. We have a couple resources down below that either Either gets you to hop onto the email list, right? Or hop into our group, right? If you're in our group, there's, I'm gonna point you right back to the channel, right back to the email. So why am I doing all this? Like, it seems like it's a bit all over the place, right? Well, actually, you, people wanna work with individuals that are one, top of mind, right? And two, you want to be able to create content, not just to flood the market with more noise. That might be your cup of tea, I don't know, but chances are if you're watching this and you're consuming this content, you might not wanna just flood the market with more content. That's not why people follow you. That is not why people subscribe to you or, or want to check out your podcast. They want to do it because they need perspective, right? They need context into what's going on in the world. Right? Last week we made a video all around how leaders and content creators, what they need to do in a, in a moment of crisis. So in that video, we talked about industry specific knowledge. We talked about why you need to infuse that into your leadership and into your content, right? We'll link to that if you wanna check that out. But look, this is the triangle effect and you wanna cycle people here because it creates multiple touch points, right? It creates multiple chances of them seeing your offer, seeing your service and being top of mind so that when they are ready to engage with you, right? When they're ready to engage with you, you are there, you are kind of that person for them. So whatever your topic is, whether it's network marketing, whether it's fitness, whether it is personal development, whatever your product and services is, you wanna be able to create these multiple touch points and we do this called the podcaster brand triangle effect. This is what we try to implement with all of our clients across the board and even though we can't get nitty gritty in this video around the offers and services, this is what you need to think about. So that's why when you're looking at the tech reviews, when you're looking at the content you need to be creating, what type of microphone you should be using, these are good questions, but podcast is only one piece of the puzzle. You are answering, an in, you're doing an incomplete puzzle, right? So yes, those questions matter, but the question really you should be thinking about is why do you wanna have a podcast? What's the purpose behind your podcast? Are you looking to make money from your podcast? Are you a business owner? Are you a full-time content creator? Are you an influencer? Let me assure you that over the last few years of working with influencers and content creators, let me tell you, there's a lot of broke content creators out there. And I don't know if that's what you are going for. I don't know if that's what you want in your bank account, but without an actual roadmap or a blueprint, it is a lot of times a big disaster when you just launch a podcast and you're probably wondering to yourself, especially if you're watching this, if you have a podcast, you're probably wondering to yourself, why am I not making as much money from the podcast, right? Why am I not driving all the leads and conversations and interactions that I ideally want from the podcast? And going back to some of these questions, right? It's what kind of leads do you want? How much revenue do you actually want? How, what do you think about community? What are your thoughts on legacy, 
right? And I'd love for you to think about this. I, it probably is a little too much to ask if you write in your comment, you write in your answers in the comment section below, but I'd love to hear from you. What have this, has this video gotten you to think about things in a different way? Have you thought about your brand in this way that podcasting is really only one piece of the puzzle and it's not the entire thing. So you should not launch a podcast if that is your whole idea of, hey, I'm gonna launch a podcast, it's gonna blow up and we're gonna you know be able to make millions from there. You have to make a commitment on, hey, I'm gonna figure out this podcast thing. I'm gonna figure out this email list. I'm gonna figure out the community. I'm gonna figure out the offer. I'm gonna figure out the services. So if you're ready to make that commitment, then yes, you should launch a podcast and we are gonna to link to a few of the offers uh, and resources down below so that you can take a look at that. So that's it for this video. If you got any great value out of this, make sure to subscribe, hit the bell so you never miss an update. We're gonna be coming at you with more videos and if there are more questions and things like that that you want to see, love to hear it in the comment section below and we'll talk to you very soon.